going on, you guys? This is the Outline Podcast, and I am your host, Kevin Dwayne, with your weekly discussion of all things entertainment, LGBT culture, and a piece of encouragement for everyone. Hope you're having an amazing week. I have a special return guest on this week's episode, and I'm excited because I have somebody to talk to this week. It is none other than the host of Gay Side Stories and like a plethora of other shows, Trillificent. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's only two. Not there's, left the there's 300. You it feels network. like a lot, though. It feels like it. So I appreciate that. Now, thank you for having me. <laughs> One of my favorite podcasts and favorite podcast hosts. So I, I'm listen, always happy I appreciate to come love. through and chop it up. I appreciate the love. I love like. I crack up how John has like made us like this trinity. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and I was like, I, gay. but I, I, I love it though. How it's kind of, it naturally kind of happened that way, I guess, just cause how we vibed a couple years ago. And then like, and I'm like, I love how this has kind of become the thing. And then people naturally pair us together anyway. It just kind of happened that way. Like, yeah. There was no yeah. meeting, no powwow. It just kind of, it became the trinity. And I was like, Oh, okay. I'll take it. I'm, I'm with here. <laughs> for it. I, I'm here for it. I told John that one of these days I'm going to come up with a topic and get all three of us at the same time, but life be life in, so we'll that put that on dope. the back burner. That would be dope. I, I know John's been on my show once, and then um, oh, I actually have to get back to him. My life is shit right now. Okay, so <laughs> he did. He hit me up like around Christmas time and was like, hey, I wanted to get you in the hot seat, so I need to actually reach out to him. Makes note to self. Reach out to John. <laughs> Like, That's real. Like, so yeah. So basically, um, to everyone listening and, you know, uh, there was no show last week um, because, I, like, there's a lot happening right now, good stuff. And I am in the process of uh, pretty much, I feel like a life change is upon me. And, like, all these opportunities are kind of popping up out of nowhere. And so I'm in this space of figuring out which direction I want to go. So last week, I was so consumed with everything else i was like i just can't record a show right now i need to focus on life and it's like it's all good stuff but it's just like transitions it feels like and this will be less vague in about a week so give me time and i will (laughs) let everybody know what's up but it's still in that weird period of like what the fuck is gonna go on what am i gonna do next what's gonna happen so yeah life's been very very interesting and i've just been kind of floating with it but also my mind i've had tunnel vision on these opportunities so i i haven't had the the wherewithal to even record and there was plenty to talk about i just didn't want to so it was an interesting journey for sure and i feel like 2019 is very much a year of transition i mean look you're in seattle now right (laughs) Listen, I was about to say, you preaching to the choir. I got my church fan over here. How's that going? Hallelujah. How's that going? It's actually going pretty well. It's been an easy transition. And I don't know if that's just because I was so ready to leave Houston that I didn't realize it. Or if it's just I just did a good job of planning. I don't know. But it's been an easy transition. And I mean, work is work. You know, a job is a job. Yeah. It puts money in the bank, but it's been it's been a lot. I just feel like 2019, I I hit the ground running. You really did. I feel like Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, you really did. It was but like it, in between our talks because when I was on your show and that was like November, it was like you were about to right. move, and now you're on the other side of that. So it's kind of dope to kind of see that. Yeah. Well, not only that, but just creatively, it's just. Stuff just started happening, and I've barely been able to keep up, but I'm excited. So, so let's talk about this network that you've created. Yeah. <laughs> so that was one of the things. So you know how you have an idea, and it may be your idea, maybe an idea with a friend, but it's like a slow burn. Mm-hmm. That's been this. So it's been a long time coming. I want to say we've been talking kind of casually about it since I don't know, maybe. October, maybe September, but it was just kind of like, oh, we should do this. And then four weeks go by without ever speaking on it again. And then it was like, oh, by the way, I did this or I came up with this. And that's why I said 2019 has just been like shut up and drive because January 
second, it just went into overdrive. And before I knew it, my co-founder was like, okay, it's time to go. X, Y, Z is happening behind the scenes that like, we need to get it popping. And I'm like, um, happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> right. That That's definitely how things have been on this end too. So I, I saw the logo was already on your, on your, uh, album art now or your podcast art. I was like, come through. Listen, move with the queen when, I, <laughs> when I say shut up and drive, Listen. I meant it. Like <laughs> I can barely keep up, but it's been exciting pulling the shows over. Thank God that I had a good host and it was easy to pull my show over because some of the other offerings that we have on the network have been uh, a little taxing, but. So how many shows do you guys have right now? Uh, so we haven't officially launched yet, but when we do, or I guess technically now we have five shows. Nice. I mean, that's awesome. Um, yeah. Now, granted, there's a lot of double dipping as far as hosts. I think from three of us, we all do two shows. Three of us do a show together, and then we all have a separate show outside of that. And then we have another show that I executively produced, quote unquote, uh, for a friend of mine. So she's coming on too. So that'll be five shows. I mean, it's amazing, and I mean, you're, it's a community. And um, like Issa Rae said, it's, it's best to network. You know laterally you you know so it's dope to right. create this and you're creating these hubs that people can go to and get all the content they need i mean and let's not forget about like the directory you directory you created with the pods by qpoc which is amazing and it's yeah. it's, it's dope because like when like when you and it's funny it's only been like two years but in podcast world it's like 10 because like when we first started it was very much like people kept saying where are all the gay black podcasts where are the gay black podcasts and we people kept tagging us and now there's so many there yeah. are so <laughs> many and it's dope because you get so many like but like i loved how it was very much like there was a need and you saw it and you fit it and now you just go to that hashtag and you just you're you have a whole list of different podcasts that you can listen to yeah like i'm actually glad that you mentioned that because now that's been kind of on the back burner just because listen is the, what do they say? Uh, you know, life hands you lemons. I don't know. Whatever saying. <laughs> but, you know, things got a little dark before I made this move. So I, that has been kind of on the back burner. And then I had it all planned out. My January was going to be dedicated to the directory, getting it back online and starting to really push to get my peers to start using it, you know, for their shows when they release an episode, things of that nature. But then the network came, and so once I get the network off the ground, then I'm going to come back to the directory. So if anybody's hearing this and you, you're part of the community and you're of color, or you at least have a co-host that's of color, then I hope that you will help support. And I'm going to be, I'm going to have to, you know, be very aggressive and, and asking people, hey, can you please start using this just so people can find us, so we can, like you said, have that hub. Because you said back in the day, but I mean, even now, it's still people that are like, where are the black gay or where are the black trans podcast? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've seen people tag, you know, a lot of times I get tagged on my show page, but I've also been seeing people start to use the hashtag and shout out to Barry at Podcast in Color because whenever she sees it, she's like, "Bam, this is where you need to go." Yep. Yeah. And so I really want to, I really want to start pushing that and saying, "Hey, this is for us by us," and hopefully we can. I mean, at the very least, I don't really have a vision for it. I just felt like, okay, this is something that needs to be done, and it's better if we do it. Yeah. So. From there, I mean, honestly, I feel like the only direction we can go is up. But I just wanted that sense of community. And it's really amazing because you don't know about all these podcasts. Like some of the more interesting podcasts that I've kind of listened to snippets just because I've had so much going on. But there's like, here's this story-based type of podcast, storytelling. 
And it's like, I'm a Latina witch and I do X, Y, Z. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm no. like, Sab- Sabrina with the Mexican accent or a Spanish accent? What? <laughs> I'm Listen, like, what have you We are undefeated as a people. We are undefeated. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. So it's things like that. I think I like the most is just because the big ones you know about or the ones that you're peers with, like, of course, you know. There's my show, there's this show, there's John's show, there's Here For. There's so many that we know of that we're kind of all in that pool. But then there's outliers or there's just people outside of our acquaintance. They may have their own separate circle. And then when this went out, people started sending stuff in. And I was like, well, where have you been? (laughs) How did you get here? Well, I'm glad you're here. So I'm looking forward to picking that back up. And building that community along with my network, so I mean, you're definitely shameless bridging, promotion. Yeah, you're <laughs> you're bridging the gap, so it definitely that's dope. Like, and even when I, because I I have it actually programmed into like my tags on my um on my platform account, so it automatically tags it when I upload shows. So I just put I have pods I have and, seen that. Yeah, I have pods and color that. and um pause by QPOC so it's just automatic and it just goes to it so I don't know if all of them is just pictures of the outline but whatever I, I support <laughs> I support I think it's dope I think that's, hey, that's I cool appreciate thing. that definitely you and uh, Sensei Raven over at the healing space I yes. definitely see whenever I have a chance to peruse which I'm again I just I need I need Time. more hands need and another brain <laughs> or <laughs> I need a, a, a time turner. <laughs> Give me some <laughs> some some time travel. Give me a DeLorean or something. I don't know, but things will level out eventually. I think. I think it's just like there's always yeah. times of haziness, and at a certain point, it just levels out. Like I said, right now, it hasn't been so much like with me and everything I'm going through. It hasn't even been a matter of time. It's just a bit of a matter of focus. I'm so focused, and like I always talk about manifestation. I'm really trying to manifest something that I really, really want, and so I'm just spending all my time visualizing this shit, like legit. And I just can't focus on anything else. So it's not even time. I could have did the shit. I just didn't want to. <laughs> and so. Like you know that's things. real yeah. that's real because yeah. i've listened you know i listen to your show every week and i hear you talk about manifestation all the time and sometimes it goes in one ear and out the other but when it was started being more consistent i really started paying attention and i feel like i barely started doing it and then life was like oh well, hello there. And it was just like, boom. It will amaze you. Here's a, here's a job, and you need to move, and you need to do this. And it will get you together. Here's this. It will get you together. And it's just, it, it, starts with a, it starts with a thought. That's it. It's, start thinking it. And then all of a sudden, you just Absolutely. start visualizing the position you want to be in. And then all of a sudden, things just start kind of popping up. And you're just like, what the hell? And it's like a lot of Absolutely. times we ask for things that we probably don't even... Like, it's weird. We ask for things, and then when they come, we feel like we're not ready, and then you gotta talk yourself into it, and be like, wait a minute, I am ready because I asked for it. And so, I think we also, some people operate in this idea of never getting what they want, and so when they when something comes that they actually want, they're like, is this really for me? And so, it's, it's interesting. And so, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, I'm hoping next show I'll have some good news, and if not next show, the show after that. But, yeah, but I'm really, I'm, I'm definitely ready for the gray area to be over. I will say that because it's been a great area for like a month and I'm just like I'm patient but not that goddamn patient <laughs> <laughs> just like I'm gonna need some answers shit that's <laughs> but, real but yeah that's real yeah 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 so I thought a fun topic that we could talk about since you know instead of these niggas a fun topic we could talk about um <laughs> Um, it's basically items in whether it's the black community, whether it's the gay community, whatever, certain things that people that are popular that you and I just actually aren't that into. I don't like the word overrated. I think overrated is subjective. And so it's kind of hard to mm-hmm. really say that about things, but it's, it's okay to be like, okay, I'm just not into it. Like everybody else. The, the thing that everybody loves to say that they're not into is Beyonce, which cracks me up. So that's what made me think of this. Cause people always say, I don't get the hype with Beyonce. Da, 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 da. I'm like, well, she's, what are you talking about? You're blind. But that also got me to thinking <laughs> about what are some things that 
people are really, really into that I'm not really feeling like that. And I was like, this would be a good show to talk about that. And it's funny because I looked at my list and I was like, oh yeah, I know I'm going to get some, uh, some what? I can't believe you said that. And da, 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 da. But it's like, it's, it's opinion. It's, it's, that's all it is. And I want to say the things that I list or the people that I say or whatever it is, I'm not saying they aren't good. I'm not saying they aren't talented. I'm just saying I don't get all that you all give it <laughs> that, okay <laughs> that, so i just want to so, preface that <laughs> i think that i may have interpreted it a little differently so it's not so i didn't go so much for over quote-unquote hyped i just went for things that are very general that you would see a lot of people agreeing with or employing in their lives oh, that fine. I'm just like, this ain't it. No, that's, that's, ain't it. that's absolutely fine. It's just any, it can be anything from, okay. from the compu- the communities that we're in that you just be like, damn, y'all really going in for this and I don't get it. But I mean, <laughs> keep rocking, but it's almost like taboo to just talk about it in just everyday conversation without, uh, people, without people losing <laughs> their minds. <laughs> So, no, my list. My list is this is this stuff is bad, and y'all need to stop. <laughs> oh, fair enough. But it's so many of you that do it. <laughs> fair enough. Well, we will work this out. However, me, however, it needs to be worked out. And what naturally with conversation, as you begin to talk, you'll come up with more because that's just how life works. So I will go ahead and start to set the tone, and I'll go really, All really right. light because I don't want you guys to be triggered too early in the show. So <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that I do, I can't. Really Really get into is red velvet cake <laughs> i just niggas love red velvet cake especially here in the south it's a thing that people request everywhere they go every birthday every thanksgiving every holiday every cupcake shop it's just like oh i want red velvet red velvet this red velvet that and i don't i never really got it Like, it's one of those things. And I've had, before you guys start leaving comments, I've had the so-called real one and I've had the so-called fake one because there's also arguments on what's real red red velvet and what's fake red velvet. But they both are just cake to me. I mean, give me a old nasty marble vanilla cake and I'll be all right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't... I don't throw marble. Right, I don't... You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I don't need... A, I don't need a, a color... A colored cake. I just... Just give me a, a, a regular flavor. But, like, literally, people go up. Like, this last Thanksgiving, I, some pe- it was... I went to a friend's, like, potluck situation. And... He was like, oh, if can you get a red velvet cake? And I'm just like, uh, I guess, okay, whatever. So I went to Piece of Cake. I don't know if that's like a U.S. thing, but it's definitely here in Atlanta. And it's a popular bakery out here, and they make really good cake. So I went and got a red velvet from Piece of Cake and was like, okay, here you go. And just the way people were just acting about this cake, I, I just didn't get it. And I had a slice. I'm like, this is cool. But, like, people really go up for it. Like, it is just, like, the next coming of, like, desserts. And I just... I just don't see it for it. It's not bad. It's just not. I like I said, I'd go up for a vanilla cake in a minute. I go up for a slice of cake from Publix and be okay. Like it's just one of those things that I just don't get. So yeah, that's my so first full point. disclosure. I used to enjoy red velvet cake very very much, but as I got older and I really looked at it and I had a few and I was like. Yeah, I don't really like the cake. I just like the icing. Is that what it is? Um, I don't think that might be what it is. Because well, I've never seen or had a red velvet cake that wasn't, that didn't have like that buttercream frosting, which mm-hmm. is like really, really good. And sweet. But if you take, it is. Like that's definitely a, a dentist visit in a <laughs> jar. Yeah. But if you, like I've had it where I just had pure cake and I'm like, this tastes like, dirt <laughs> it's not that good it's, it doesn't it doesn't even taste like cake to me like yeah. by the time you manipulate it and then it's like he throw a little chocolate in there throw this red food color in and, see, that's and the I'm thing. Just, it doesn't taste and there's good. arguments about that because apparently that's the fake one the the chocolate and the coloring apparently that's the fake version there's another way of making it and i'm just like I, I can't i don't know i don't even care they all taste the same to me but like yeah. <laughs> there's arguments especially in the south about there being a real one and a fake one and yeah i feel like it's more of a i feel like 
it became a I don't want to say delicacy, but that's the only word I can come up with. It became like no. a, it became like a it became a rare treat to black folks because you only got it on certain holidays. And so I think because it was like, oh, Auntie's making her famous red velvet, it became this, oh, this is the tour de force of cakes. And it's like, okay. But like yeah. but now it's just like I don't I don't know. People really just act like it's just like, oh my God, Red Velvet. Okay, get your life. I mean, do your thing. I mean, get your life. But listen, I'm a simple bitch, so give me a good old yellow cake with chocolate fries. Listen! <laughs> and the thing about it is, I, I will get hype for a lemon cake if you ask me. <laughs> you yeah. a, a give me a lemon cake. <laughs> give me an old nasty marble. Man! Even a 7-Up cake. Right! Right! <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking with the Red Velvet. I'm like, Man, eh? No. A 7-Up cake with the burnt edge just listen come on now or the little the pound cake and the little round um man that's yeah, I'd go yeah like that. a little like a butt cake yes, yeah i go up yeah, for that. yeah yeah i'm with you i'm with you yeah. like the only time i really start really would eat red velvet after a while was my grandmother on my stepfather's side had a recipe and after she passed he started making it and it's like this three-tier and it, but it's it, like you can taste the difference. Like, I don't know what her recipe in, called for, and I know there's another way to make it where you make where the batter is red without using food coloring. But I can't remember off the top of my head. And that's how they did it. So it tastes like cake. It doesn't taste like that weird. I don't know brown styrofoam that some cake, <laughs> red velvet cakes are. <laughs> right. But it's still about the frosting. <laughs> It's still about like the that, frosting. That, that frosting, and then he puts like pecans, like in every layer, and then on top. Listen, I be in hell. I don't even eat all the cake, but I I, I don't disagree. Here's the I'm, f- I'm, funny thing about but, that, though. I'm not a big icing fan in general, so maybe that's it. I like actual cake, so maybe that's it. Maybe because yeah. the cake is like whatever. I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. Like, yeah, um, it maybe. depends on the cake because listen. Listen, it's nothing worse than some dry ass cake with no frosting. <laughs> oh, right. even you got a cup of milk or something I can pour on this bitch, right? <laughs> Listen, you just be like, mm, mm-mm. Uh, you <laughs> got, yummy. Not then you really. got mouth rush and shit. <laughs> with, yes, oh, yes, yes, okay. yes. All right, so do you have something to offer to this list? I do. Yes. I do. I did my homework. Yes. I did my outline for the outline. Yes. So I'm going to switch it and I'm going to go from black community to gay community. I'm with it. Uh, Something, I don't know if it's overhyped, but I just, something that I see a lot and I don't get and even when you sift through the jokes, I still don't get it. Mm -hmm. And that is bottom hate and shaming or verse hate and shaming. Oh, yes. Take it deep. I don't get (laughs) what In 2018 into 2019, this is still a thing. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't understand why y'all hate bottom so much. And bottom hate other bottom. And I'm just like, why? Why? Why can't we all, I don't want to say, why can't we all get along? Because that's not realistic. But why do you hate? Like, I've seen scenarios where there'll be a bottom and someone else comes in. And you don't even know if this other nigga is even a bottom. And, but you assume he's about him, and so you got dagger eyes. You don't like him. You see him as competition, and I'm just like, did Chimamanda not teach us anything? Man, it's it's trash. But then it also goes into the whole one of my favorite words to use is heteronormative. It goes to the same uh, way that we treat women. It goes to the same way true. the way women are seen as competition to one another, and then we keep trying to equate tops to the men and bottoms mm-hmm. as the women, and it doesn't work <laughs> it, they, they no don't, they don't it equal doesn't each make other. sense <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it is it's so problematic and like that's the problem but then also because i've experienced that often so when i was on the what about your friends podcast there was a moment i don't know if you heard it, there was a moment where i guess frankie uh i guess thought i was versed and i was like i guess and i was like i guess that's what i give the people cool and i Do was like, you and i but that i don't know <laughs> but but here's the thing i, I often get that people will come come at me on some i want you to be the, you know the top and all that shit or whatever and i'm like oh yeah that's not my ministry but then the way that they talk and talk to me changes and that always has bothered me and it's kind of like 
just because you now know my sexual position shouldn't change the way you interact with me. I'm not your sis. I'm not your Judy. I'm not, you know, it all, it goes yeah. from this whole, like, I want to suck your dick to now like, Hey sis, no, nah, that's, that's not it. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's just not it. And so it's just like, I, I know exactly what you mean. And so you see that all the time. I was just watching a web series from another popular gay and then they were kind of doing the same thing where they were like talking about this couple and it's the whole, well, who's topping who? And like, why does that matter? Why the fuck does yeah. that matter? If they ain't fucking Mind you, business. if they ain't fucking you and you ain't fucking them, why does it matter who's doing what to who? It doesn't matter. Like, Mind your business. But it was Indeed. that same, I, yeah. I think it's interesting that you say that because I didn't think about it in, until I just heard it. But I've experienced that too, where it's like, but it's kind of like a, different it's the same scenario but it's a little different and so i've experienced over the years being treated differently because people assume i'm like quote unquote 100 percent top mm -hmm. and so then when i'm like i mean i mean i'm verse if i feel like it they're like oh you verse and so that's and the reason why i said that it was bottom and verse because then there's this whole weird thing with verse and before y'all start sliding your thumbs across your device. <laughs> Let me say that I, I, I can tell the difference when someone's joking and when someone is not. But number one, we have to remember that a lot of times comedic things, things that we make jokes out of are rooted in truth. Yes. And number two, not everybody that is kicking with you when you're joking is joking themselves. And so I've been recent. I've been watching this unfold on Twitter. I've been watching what the Twitter gays are talking about, and it's like with this verse hate, like they hate verse. And so I really think that the verse hate is actually an extension of bottom hate because there's so many people who automatically assume if you're verse, then you're just a bottom masquerading as verse. Now there are people that do that. Don't get me wrong. I know that, but. But I always want to ask people on the timeline when they start going on and on about, oh, you claiming he verse, but then you see him, you know, with a 12 inch dildo. And it's like, what is that? He's verse. Well, <laughs> and then the other thing about <laughs> the other thing about that is it's always the same scenario where it's like, oh, well, well, you know, I've been tricked by verse dudes so many times. And it's like, have you been tricked by verse guys? Or have you been tricked by bottoms? Because you, you're not going to sit here and tell me that a dude told you he was verse, but then he only wanted you to fuck him. And then later on, he admitted that he was bottom. But now but now you mad at verse guys. And it's like, but that person that you're upset with was never verse to begin with. And I'm confused where we're missing this. How did we get here? How did we it's, get on it's, on it's, the highway to hell? <laughs> it's already stupid because you can't. Right. I, I can't. I hate when people date one fucking person and then generalize everybody else because of their one experience. That's the dumbest. In science, because you motherfuckers flunked it, there's a thing called a hypothesis, okay? And then what you have to do is you have to get multiple samples, okay? And then you have to test each one of them and then come up with a conclusion you don't get one motherfucking sample and decide that everything is that way bitch so i just <laughs> it's come a, through it's, Kevin, now the bottom guy come through. it's the same about like like with like astrological signs i say pisces oh i date a pisces y'all trash no that nigga you dealt with was trash and you were probably trash but don't want to admit it because you're not self-aware bitch but don't sit here and generalize all of us because you had one bad experience you know what i mean like it's just like nah you need multiple samples you need multiple again samples. preaching to the choir as a gemini <laughs> i'm just like oh gemini's and scorpios get the worst I always I'm just like every I ugh, defend God, I defend so I defend Gemini's and Scorpios because I feel like everyone bandwagons on talking shit about y'all. They don't actually feel the way about Gemini's and Scorpios. They just say it because it's popular to say it. Listen, because I've had enough people. Oh well, you you a different kind of Gemini, and I wanted to be like, well, how many Gemini's have you actually met? None. And interacted with, but I'm on a Kendrick Lamar album long now. Long term basis. <laughs> I like right. the, I like my Gemini friends and I love my Scorpio friends. It's, it is what it is. Like people are stupid. That's what it comes down to. But, but uh, <laughs> that's legit. It. But now that <laughs> you, is a dumb. 
<laughs> but just, it just is what it is. Like multiple samples. But like also, I thought about um I'm glad you said that. And I have one for the black community. Just because they are black and male, and then also just because there are a lot of people who have been wrongly accused of crimes doesn't mean that black men can't actually be guilty of shit. Ahem, Bill Cosby. Ahem, R. Kelly. Ahem, oh. Soldier Boy. I'm just saying, like, y'all kill me with this shit. Yes, we do have disparity. Yes, there is racism. Yes, there are a lot of us who are in jail that shouldn't be for dumb crimes. But that don't mean there ain't a lot of us who aren't doing crimes. And I'm so sick of y'all acting like these niggas ain't did shit and you got proof in your face. It's Mm. tiring. Like, I get so exhausted at the way, like, I saw a post from Tarana Burke of the Me Too movement. She Mm. tweeted, she said that people were saying that she's a traitor for going against R. Kelly. She's like, but I'm defending black girls. What the fuck are you talking how, about? So how bas- is she a traitor? Ba- so basically, basically, black people means black men, pretty much. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that was black Not straight untrue. men. I'm sorry, black straight men. That's what black people mean. Yeah. It means black straight yeah. men. And what's so funny about it is, the people that are out there pr- protesting and shit are women and gay men. That's the gag. Like you the people, lose. it's just. Like, or yeah. at the very least, they're the ones organizing right. so that y'all cis head asses can come out and then push us little, out, right? And say, oh, and I then don't, sit I don't your, center either. yourself and act like the rest of us weren't there Man. to begin with. But yeah, yeah. No, y'all gotta stop this shit. Just, I understand exalting and being pro black. I'm pro black, and I'm always gonna go up. But y'all gotta stop seeing like thinking just because a black person is wealthy or has success it's just people trying to take him down no if you did some evil ass shit then you deserve punishment for it there's no way around that shit and y'all literally will look at proof like bill cosby literally admitted to drugging the girl nah 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 she knew what was up like, there's a video that y'all, all y'all niggas saw, and y'all swear that ain't R. Kelly in it, even though the same goddamn house has been in several other things. Like, I'll just, the, the, the cartwheels that people will do <laughs> just to try to explain away some factual shit blows my mind. And it, it's Listen, like, and that's not, that's not even factoring in the wishy washy attitude towards the criminal justice system. Yeah. Like, oh, it's it's all bad when it's your homeboy, your family member that's going down. Right. But then it's well, they weren't uh, they weren't convicted right. when it's somebody. Which one like, is okay, it? But there's proof, <laughs> and I hear it all the time, and I will reiterate it here right now. George Zimmerman wasn't convicted either, and we know he did that shit. <laughs> I mean, O.J. Simpson got off too. I just well, that nigga did that shit. <laughs> All day. He did he did that shit and a whole lot of other shit. But, <laughs> but but it but it goes back into it. It's like one of those things like it's very nuanced. Yes, the criminal justice system is trash. I would mm-hmm. never argue that. Like it's trash. But that is not a reason to think that that somehow black men who have money, those are people you should watch more because money and power is dangerous. Absolutely. Because, and especially when you get off, because then you feel invincible. Like, what y'all gonna do to me? Like, like he has been for the past what fifteen years, and that's another years. thing. The nigga is free walking around. So why y'all talking about? Well, why y'all taking him down? Why y'all? Why? Well, put these other niggas in jail. He ain't in jail. Nope. <laughs> He's walking around touring. He's he not in jail. <laughs> and most of the most of the men who come up in these kind of situations are not in jail not. and never go to jail. Are not. So yeah, that. The black community, I, that that's that's one I can't, I can't, I, nah, y'all gotta stop this shit. Like, okay, crime is crime. <laughs> okay, well, since we're here, since we pulled up to the black community, I have one too, and it's kind of along the same lines, but a little different. And that is, I don't get our families hiding and protecting known predators in the family. Oof. Man. Like we have, I don't, I can't, we, I can't speak for other races because obviously I'm black as shit. 
<laughs> but I can definitely say I've seen enough instances. We have enough books. We have enough stories. We have enough movies where we know that this is a common occurrence. It's not mm-hmm. rare. Like, if you start talking about something along these lines on Twitter, you're going to have so many, mostly women, but there's some men, too, who will have stories about their uncle or their dad or their brother or their whoever, their cousin. And then mama, knowing what happened, will still have you sit next to them at Thanksgiving dinner. Stuff like that. And it's just like... it's a, um, I was just talking to uh, a friend of mine about this. Um, and it it comes down to this weird sense of loyalty that we have for family. We have this kind of like, this is my blood. Whether you chose them, this is my blood. I'm not going to do that. And then I also hear people say phrases like, I don't care what you did. I'm always going to have your back. It's like this weird kind of like, I can't send my brother to jail. Because if you took action, that would be the next step. If your brother right. touched your child, the next step would be to call the police and do the whole nine. But they have this, but that's my brother. I grew up with him. I can't send right. him to jail. Like, what kind of person would I be? Um, Well, a good one, but, you know, you can pass yeah. it up. But it's, uh, it's trash, man. It's trash. Like, yeah. it's, it's absolute yeah. trash. But it's like, just absolute trash, yeah. Uh, and that's a hard one. But and so even with that, let's talk about... Okay, as black people, once again, this is across the board. I don't know about white people, but definitely black and Latin. We go up for our mamas, okay? We go up, Mm. we we love our mamas. But, like, I noticed with some people, and luckily I had a mother who, like, actually had my back. So I haven't had this experience. But I've seen some people who have parents who literally do everything but be a mother to them like they ruin their lives their credit they do all this Mm. shit to them like they do all this shit to them but guess what that's my mama though that's my mama though like nah that's my mama you only get one it's like where does that limit stop because i understand Mm. okay that's your mama but if your parents this could be dad too this could be dad too but if your parents actually aren't being parents to you like, all they did was actually have you? Where does that line... Like, how much pain can they get away with that, they, that they're causing you before you're like, okay, this is too much? And not only that, we could have a whole different conversation about people who are in those types of situations who basically, basically pass the buck and are hurting people around them because they're being hurt by their parent mm. and they don't want to admit it yeah i've come across enough people like that where it's like what what is going on and then when you find out the backstory it's like oh my mama was on this or my mama did this or mm. my dad did this i gotta take care of my siblings because my mama was doing xyz and it's like mm. so you have to make a decision beloved like are you gonna keep living like this and hurting people around you or are you gonna ha- have a hard conversation with yourself about setting some real boundaries with this parent. Like nobody's saying throw your mama away. Right. But it's but okay to say, yeah, this this is where this stops though. It's yeah, it's okay to say as a child and I mean I'm we're talking adults here. Like children, I don't I don't know what to tell y'all. But <laughs> adults who have these types of toxic relationships with their parents, it's like you have to get to a point where it's like Enough is enough. Yeah. And they're not going to stop being your mama if you stop letting them walk all over you. They're right. not going to stop being your father if you stop being a doormat or you stop mm. living your life for them or you stop always giving them all of your money and all of your time and all of your resources. They will still be your parent. Yeah. And more than likely, if you stop doing that, they might actually be able to stand up on their own and be an adult because that's one of the saddest things that I see is adult children who basically have to be the parent to their parent. Yeah. And I'm not talking on some shady oaks. I mean, shady pines type shit. Oh, I'm no, talking on some. Have to, yeah, no, I've seen that. Like Never. you 28 and your mama 50, but you have to basically take care of her. Like it's, uh, obviously, you know, use your discernment and, factor in nuance you know obviously if your mama get laid off or something yes yeah, yeah for your mama yeah. 
but if, but, but, but if she quit, job, but if she quit her job and say, "I'm moving in with you," and you ain't can't do nothing about it, no, nah, mama, no, 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 no. <laughs> when she just decides to stop trying because she has you to depend on, something in the milk ain't clean. Yeah. You gotta, well, you have to but that, that also goes to this though too though a lot of people make their kids their spouses <sighs> listen they have these especially women and boys this is my king <laughs> That is they, so cringeworthy. They be two. Just, they be two years old. This is my king, and they literally groom the boy to pretty much be like their boyfriend. Pretty much, like you know, they travel together. They do all this stuff together. Mm-hmm. He's the man. But of the you know house. what the gag is? Yeah. You know what the gag is on that? So, a lot of times when you have, we'll say, mamas who do that, they'll train their son up to love their mama unconditionally while simultaneously hating women. <laughs> yeah. Well, but then so also, treat... but, but these, but the, a lot of these mothers, not to generalize, but then these yeah. mothers also don't like the girlfriends of the boys because now you're taking away my safety. It's, it's Yeah, I mean, woo-hoo. I'm not even talking about just like even, not even a specific girlfriend. I'm just yeah. saying in general, in general yeah. like you think about having her you overhear a conversation of a, a mother talking to her young son he might be like six or seven and it's like don't be letting these fast ass girls do this this and this mm-hmm. and it's like what are you instilling in this young yeah quote-unquote king yeah <laughs> yeah it's funny because like i that's what uh i think what will i think it was wabi said that actually she's been on the show a few times and we we're talking about how she was like how many these fuck niggas come from good mothers <laughs> Mm, mm. <laughs> like they come from good mothers but they still go out to the world and just are misogynistic as fuck it's like but you, you know what i would ask a follow-up question first of all shout out to moabi yes. i don't know you but i've heard you and you friends with kevin so you cool hey. um but i would ask a follow-up question and how many fuck boys are coming from mothers who have deluded themselves into thinking they're good mothers Ooh. Ooh. Because I'm sorry, and I mean I was gonna, I would say feel free to drag me, but I don't care. No, that's, I will a, that's, mute a, a block. that's that's a but word. That's a word. A lot simply of buying, y'all, right? Just simply buying Jordans a lot of, ain't gonna make you a good. Yeah, no, that's real. That's real. Yeah, a lot of y'all's mamas are not good mamas. I'm sorry. I know you love her, and you she might make pecan pie that will knock your socks off, oh. but. A lot of y'all's mamas are not good mamas. A lot of y'all's daddies are not good daddies. Oh, because here's the thing. But then, ooh, this is a word. See, I knew this would happen. I love this. Is why I like people like you. <laughs> See, the conversation flows. <laughs> See, but here's the thing, though, because I'll, and that's another community thing. Sometimes we think simply taking care of kids is being a good parent, but we don't wear. Mm. We don't think about their character. We don't think about their manners. It's just like, well, I go to work. I got to put a roof over your head. I feed you. I make sure you go to school. I'm a good parent. Like, nah, you got to check some shit. Like, yeah. how, how you treat people a, and all that, yeah. There's a distinct difference between taking care of kids and raising kids. Yes. Like, for myself, like I, I identified a long time ago, I don't want children. I like children sometimes. They're little humans and they do little human things okay great (laughs) but i don't want my own children and when people ask me why don't you like kids don't you want blah 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 whatever reasons that they have for me should have kids but i'm just like but i can be honest with myself in that i don't want to raise a child because there's a lot that goes into raising a child it's not just providing for them it's not just making sure that they their teeth come in straight or, you know, they get braces. It's not just putting them in football and T-ball if they're a little boy trying to make sure that they're masculine. It's not making girls play with barbs. There's a lot more that goes into raising a child. You have to teach them morals. You have to teach them what's right and wrong. There's so much that goes into it. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, a controversial comment <laughs> coming through, but, I think part of that, too, is that a lot of people, they depend so heavily on teachers raising their children. Woo, Jesus. That they don't 
realize that they're okay. You're providing for them. You're making sure they have food. You're making sure they have clothes on the back. And that's, you know what? You don't get no pat on the back for that. Cause that's what the fuck you're supposed to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that added step of actually raising them and making sure that they are a good human being instilling good values in them early, yeah. not passing on your toxic behavior, not, carrying on toxic or just problematic cycles that so often happen in black families. Like there's a lot, there's a lot of responsibility that goes into raising children. And I recognize that. Let me, let me tell you something. I don't have the range. <laughs> you don't have the range. Why are you down there? <laughs> Wait. Do the so, and I, have you ever noticed how parents get when schools out? When school's out, they be mad as hell. They be like, they be they ready to kill themselves. I'm gonna feed these kids. I'm gonna feed these kids. You be like, bitch, that's your kid though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And I say that. Let me give a little background. I mean, not that it really, really matters, but just to give a little background. Many, many, many moons ago, I worked for a little while as a teacher's aide, and I saw firsthand. And obviously. It's not all parents, blah, 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 blah. Hashtag not all parents. <laughs> but a whole lot would come in there and I'm just like, um, could you not send your child to school with a book bag full of coloring books? He actually has work to do. He needs to learn. I need you to go home and help him with his multiplication. Mm-hmm. And they looking at me like, I'm like, that's what you're supposed to do. You the teacher. It's okay, called, but it's called home work because it's work at the home. <laughs> like I teach them the principle, but they have to it has to be reinforced. That's your job as the parent. You're supposed to be raising him. I'm I'm to teach him. I'm not going. I'm not supposed to be raising him. I remember I had a really good relationship with this one little boy in a kindergarten class, and he was one of those like you know those kids that are like bad until they have somebody that just sits down and, and it's like, why are you doing the things that you do? And then they're like, oh, I don't have to do these things. That was him to the point where his mama was like, so when are you going to get your teacher certification? Because he needs to be in your class. And I'm like, well, sis. <laughs> and the gag is, Ooh. all you did was give him proper attention. Most kids yeah. act out because that's the only way they can get attention from people. Because whether it's negative or positive, it's still attention. And people Listen. don't get that shit. And it's like, oh, yeah, I can you, get your attention by being a good person? Oh, shit. Who knew? <laughs> Listen, you would be amazed at how many children, not all, hashtag again, <laughs> but you would be you would be amazed by how many children will stop and pause and even change their behavior. If you just ask, like, why are you doing that? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that was the same thing with this little boy. Like, he would just be doing all kinds of crazy stuff to the little girl. Um, not even just the little girl. Everybody. He was just a menace. And one day I was just like, why do you think, uh, come here and talk to me. Come pull up a chair, pull up a little mini chair. But why do you do the things that you do? And he was looking at me like, I don't know. oh, <laughs> and I'm like, I was like, don't you understand that when you do those things, you get in trouble versus, and I said, so what happens when you do good things? What do I do as your teacher's aide when you do good things? He was like, I get candy, I get stars, I get this, that, and the other. I was like, so why do you choose to do bad things knowing you're going to get brownie fate or whatever else and then go home? And you know your mama don't play that. You you know your mama's going to hem you up. (laughs) Right. And his behavior slowly started. His his mama was very appreciative, which I, you know, cool, pat on my back, but she was like, can you be his teacher? No, girl. No, I can't be no surrogate father. I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that is definitely not my ministry. I ain't being no her daddy. If they, they if they don't have four legs, I can't be their daddy. And even then, <laughs> damn. And even then, it is what it is. There needs even to be then. some kind of you know. I always think to myself, I'll probably end up adopting a kid. Like that's you know eight. <laughs> <laughs> something that already <laughs> some some something that already kind of runs on its own for the most part. It at least yeah, knows yeah. how to get the pop tarts off the cabinet. You know, if yeah. I want if I want to sleep in, it can at least get through breakfast without yeah. me involved. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, I could see myself doing something with like 
a teenager or something and be like, look, you got two choices. You can be in this shitty situation or you can come in my house, act like you got some sense and get you some fried chicken and a nice place to sleep. It's yeah, up to you. The yeah. choice is yours. Like Captain Planet said, the choice is yours. Man, I'll help you fill out your but job, outside of that, You know, I got you. <laughs> outside of that, like raising a child from birth? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cannot. I cannot. I cannot. Mm-mm. That is funny. Come through for this, never do it. this being an in-depth conversation that I didn't plan on. I love it when it happens like this. This was going to be some shallow. I don't know why you didn't plan on it. I, well, I, I, every time we talk. I, I thought it was going to be like real light and just shallow shit. I'm like, oh, this is deep. Uh, Come through. <laughs> no, me. For, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. All right. Okay. So, so I, what's next? Oh, um, well, mine are all like light shit so i guess i'll take it back light oh, okay okay i just wasn't sure whose turn it was okay. oh it's me okay so something that i don't get oh this is for the gays i guess we're switching off game like <laughs> the gay... okay so i say this i'm not saying it's bad i'm not saying i don't watch it i'm not saying it's not you know it's not funny but y'all give it a lot and that is the golden girls <laughs> i the... I it, it's taken me six years to get through four seasons like I just got to four seasons the fourth season and I'm laughing now and I'm like ha this is funny but I feel like the gays give that show a lot and I've been analyzing and I'm like is it because of the shade is that what it is because all the cattiness between them is that is that why I'm supposed to love it or mm-hmm. I need an answer mm-hmm. I'm going to go with yes. Yeah, is that it? Because they shade each other all the time. I'm like, okay, I get it. Down. Yeah, they Boots. shade. And, that, and that's funny. And I, and this, here's the thing. It's it's a funny show. But at the end of the day, I'm still like, these are some old ladies like that also say, and it's in the 80s, like the late 80s. So there's some things I'm like, this is, this is problematic as fuck. But okay, cool. And then like... <laughs> It's taken me so long to get through the seasons. And I know gay, gay men love the Golden Girls. Like, go the fuck up for it. And it's a funny show. But I know for me, it's taken me all this time just to get to season four. Yeah. And, I think part of the appeal is that a lot of gays see their matriarchs mm-hmm. in the Golden Girls. And especially if you had one that was actually kind of like one of them, mm-hmm. like if you had a, a grandma that was a Sophia and every time you see her, she's, and it's not like some, uh, or maybe they see what they wish their matriarch was. Mm. Cause let's be honest. So let's pull up a chair, children. Let's be honest. A lot of our matriarchs are just plain mean. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of y'all's grandmas, that y'all love so much, so dearly, and there's nothing wrong with loving your grandma, please do. As a person who doesn't have any left, love the fuck out of your grandma. However, it's real. we have to call a spade a spade. Some of y'all's grandmas and mamas and aunties are just plain ass mean, and it's not funny ha-ha mean. It's, I have to take a break in the powder room <laughs> so that she won't see me cry mm-hmm. mean. But then also y'all got Stockholm syndrome and you normalize it and you think that's okay Ooh. because that's my grandma. Mm-hmm, same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. It's like yeah. we're we're literally raised to love people who hurt us and it's crazy. <laughs> so that's my best guess is that they either they see their grandma, auntie, whatever, mm-hmm. or they see what that they show. wish their grandma, auntie was. And the Golden Girls, is it? and I, you know, we all just love Shay. We and it's fun, but the thing about it is, it's lighthearted. Yeah. It's fun. It's a funny show. I mean, it's a funny it's show. Problematic, for sure. like <laughs> in 2019, you're not gonna get away with, you know, one great aunt calling another great aunt a slut. This gonna be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, but on this show, it's yeah, funny. Yeah, it's like I said, it's funny. I, I like I watched. I think it was season four, episode eighteen, the one where Dorothy's friend was in town, and they they were arch enemies, kind of, and they played tennis, and she ended up like dying or something. Or she pretends she died. But I remember laughing at that episode end to end, like, okay, this is the 
funniest episode. In fact, I went on one of those um those rank those ranker sites to see where it ranked in the best Golden Girls episodes, and it was like number mm-hmm. eight of all time funniest shows. I was like, okay, because because I was like, this is the this I hadn't laughed that much to the show until that episode. And I've kind of, everything else has been like chuckles and like you know quick little laughs. That whole episode had me die, and I said, okay, now this is what I'm talking about. This is funny as fuck. <laughs> But it's one of those mm-hmm. things where it's just like, but like gays give it a lot. <laughs> like they give it yeah. a lot. So so there's been times where I've been kind of sitting there like, damn, like what's wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with me. I just don't get into it like that. Like it's funny. It's funny. But like just the way people go up and go into it. But then again, I don't know that I really herald shows in a way like a stand, if that makes sense. I'll probably be like that for Insecure in 20 years. Like, <laughs> that's the show. Uh, that- listen, you beat me to it because I was just about to be like, I don't know about you, but listen, I'm going to have my cane ready to bust somebody upside the head if they talk ill of Insecure. Yeah, because I, like, I go up for Insecure too. But then also, it may be also, I'll keep it real, it may be a bias in me too, though, where it's hard for me to. To go up for shows with people that don't look like me. It's like I don't see myself in this. Yeah, that was a fair. white ass show, and I'm like, I don't. And also, I'm still not even half the age of the characters they play, so I just can't relate. So it's like one of those things you're just yeah. like, okay, like so it's like I don't know, but I I I watch it from time to time on Hulu, like because it's not a bad show, but it, it's never been a binge watch for me. It's never been a I'm gonna sit here all day. And just watch Golden Girls. It just doesn't do that for me. But I, I you, we, you'll be remiss to say it around other gays. What are you talking about? Like, it's funny. So, you saying that just had, uh, I, had to, I just had an interesting thought pop up in my head. And I wonder if part of that is, as you were saying, we don't see ourselves on that. Like, I don't, I don't, I can't think off the top of my head of seeing black people on that show. Especially, really not. I'm not saying there weren't ever any, but there are there are characters like remember one time Dorothy's was it Dorothy's son? Yeah, Dorothy's son. He he had an older black woman as his fiance. And right, but it's like one off type yeah, things like it's that. Always one off. But I too. I wonder if specifically for our community of black gays, I wonder if that's just something that we kind of have learned to overlook because we're so used to. Let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. I wonder if that's something that some people have learned to overlook because they're so used to chasing the white gaze. Mm. G-A-Z-E. Yes. And so you look at that and you're like, it's nothing to you that you don't see yourself because you want to be close to whiteness already. A word. However, that would require a lot of self-awareness, which... I'm going to throw it out here again. Hashtag problematic. (laughs) A lot of us gays do not have any type of self-awareness. We're not aware of our toxicity, our shitty behavior, among other things. I could get deeper into that or I could go the the opposite direction. Or they're aware. Yeah, or they're aware (laughs) and they brag about it. And that drives me crazy. Right. I cannot stand They feel like people. it's a badge of honor. Oh, they be like, oh, when I get mad, you don't want to see me when I get mad. Who gives a fuck? Like, why are you proud of that? Like, why right. are you proud that it's you have like, an attitude? Why are you proud that you can cuss somebody out? That's not something that, like, that means you're immature. Like, uh, right. nope. This yeah. is why I stay at home. This is why I keep my doors shut. <laughs> 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 this is why you I You swear don't. you mean. <laughs> oh, people are dangerous, man. Like they they brag about the craziest thing. Like, but then also yeah. with the, along with the Golden Girls thing, the along with the way they shade each other, shade is so normalized with us. Like that's like that's mm-hmm. how that's how people feel like they're connecting with one another. I hate it, but that people feel like they're connecting by being shady mm-hmm. and catty. So I'm like, okay, so I get why people are into it for that reason because all they do is shade each other all day and people wear that as a badge of honor I can read anybody I can read it it's just like okay got it but are you hoping people grow though are they hoping you grow because it's very high school so like I get why gays are into it I'm just not into it where I'm just like okay cool it's funny though like nothing on my list nothing on my list is terrible not even red velvet cake I don't hate it I just don't go up for it that's gonna be the title of this. I just don't go up for it. <laughs> Man, I don't know. 
You may not go up for it, but I go down for it. Throw it in the garbage. No. <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> it's not good. Throw it away. You're, you're but a, since we pulled up to the black gay community, yay. my next one is I don't understand the acting like or actually believing because delusion is real. But acting like only one female rapper can be successful at a time. Or any artist, really. But yes, you're right. Well, that's true. Any artist. But I specifically put the female rappers because it's different. Like mm-hmm. with singers, it's a little bit different. There's, you know, a couple of crowns to hang to hand out. But with rap, with yeah. women, yeah, it's, it's one crown. It can only be Nicki. It can only be Cardi. Meanwhile, there's some other people. I have a playlist filled with female rappers that goes in, and I'm just like, all these people are being overlooked because of the same view that only one can be out. And I'm right. like, that's stupid. Like, yeah, I'm like, when did female rap become Highlander? Why can there only be one? <laughs> I don't understand. Like, are they dueling backstage at the VMA? It's like, I don't get it. Yeah. Is somebody being sacrificed? I don't understand it. And, and again, because, you know, me being a little bit older, but not old, I'm like, I grew up in a time where we had lots, like, until, you know, I like, did shit go down when Foxy Brown and Lil' Kim fell out? And now everybody had to take a, pick a side because, listen, I grew up in the Ladies' Night era, not the Night Remix. Right. That was everything, that's, too. That's what I'm, listen, The video had everybody in it. To this day. Man. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's part of the reason why people, you know, in, in our age bracket, we go up for Missy because Missy was one of those people that united the girls, literally. Yeah. But this whole idea of there can only be one, and it not only can there only be one, but if you don't go up for the one that I selected, then you a trash ass bitch and you don't deserve anything nice, and I hope you die in the middle of the street. And it's like, wait a minute. That's extreme. Yeah. I'm like, but there's a lot of music on iTunes. Why can I only listen to one? Why is that on not? Oh, first of all, mind your business. <laughs> mind, <laughs> mind the Apple music that pays you, okay? Okay. First and foremost. But second of all, y'all crazy as hell. So I don't get it. I don't get it. And, it's, and uh, you know, a lot of times people be like, oh, it's the bars and they in high. No, there's a lot of people our age and older yeah. That be on the internet doing a whole lot. No, I ain't and then to be honest, they're worse because they're the ones with quote unquote facts and then they start doing threads and you're like, Jesus, kill me now. So, and that'd be good. I got baited into a uh uh one of those conversations with a lawyer. Oh. And, and but he was a Nikki fan. And but the thing about it is Ooh. y'all don't but y'all don't know that y'all don't fuck with me when it comes to music facts. Like music is my shit. And so I'm like, how are you a lawyer, but you can't even give decent arguments? And so we were just going back and forth. Think about it. And here's the thing. I like he was doing all type of straw man arguments and slippery slopes. I'm like, you didn't even know what with what, what fallacies are. How are you doing this right now? And then like here's the thing. I'm a fan of both Nikki and Cardi. So it was a weird thing, but he instantly wanted to just be like all about Nikki. And I'm just like, how are you a lawyer like i don't get this but like i was totally baited in it i'm like damn we're both in our 30s talking about these two girls i just can't <laughs> deal like i cannot yeah i'm good on that <laughs> it gets away from I'm me good sometimes. On that. sometimes it's just so easy because people say dumb things and you're just like oh that's so ignorant i and you're like mm, ignore it kevin ignore it ignore it oh that's some stupid shit and, and you then like, you be like and another thing. Right, <laughs> so but then you just like, I just, just want to say one thing. I always think I'm going to say one thing, and then nope. And then no, one that's thing. a trap. Because then the rebuttal happens. You be like, but, 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 and now y'all been talking for three hours, and you feel silly. <laughs> you right. feel you like, what did I do on Tuesday night? I sat there for three and a half hours <laughs> talking about Nicki Minaj and Cardi. What a loser I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny as shit. you get baited you be like i could just ignore this i could just ignore this i could you know but but it's it's like that with artists in general though and i'm on stand wars or something else but to be Ooh. fair to be fair the straights do it with sports it's not different it's all entertainment like people Hell, the, the straights do it with with musicians too <laughs> right but rappers they're not immune just, right 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 so it's just it's just interesting though that how how easy it can happen you be like oh i'm tired <laughs> the exhausted. interesting thing about that is maybe just because we've been connected for long enough but I'm like anybody that 
knows enough about you would know about your musical prowess. Like me, like I would never try to debate you on music because I don't know shit. I, either I like it or I don't. But you'd be like, now listen, in 1982, <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be looking at some of your Facebook posts like, the, let me Google. <laughs> I, I just like dealing in the real world, and people love to like make up their own stuff, and I'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, I remember yeah. uh, somebody was just like, oh... I think what they say they they said the Migos were irrelevant. I said you do realize that they changed the sound of music like four years ago, like and they've been on the charts ever since, and they have this many hits. Yeah, like just be. I tell people just because you don't like someone doesn't make them irrelevant to culture. And people Bingo. Keep, people have this idea that because you don't listen to them, they're somehow not doing something. I'm like, no, 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 that's not how that works. And it's like with Cardi, people feel like oh because they don't like her somehow she's. Not. I'm like Cardi's really the biggest thing out right now. Like if you look at the mm-hmm. way the way her career is going, like she's been on every major thing that you can think of, and come Super Bowl, I, I believe she has a Pepsi commercial coming out. Like that's kind of the mm-hmm. that, Pepsi is the sign that you're the shit. Okay, pretty <laughs> what, much you get a Pepsi commercial on Super Bowl, that pretty much signals that yes, you are you know the sliced bread. So it's just those things right. where just operate you know, the facts. It's interesting that you say that because, and this is not specific to any community, this is just general, but a lot of people just have an inflated sense of their opinion Mm, to the point where they believe it's fact. Yes. And there's no debate. They say facts after opinions. I hate that shit. Facts. No, not at all. That's not a fact at all. It's just an opinion. (laughs) That's it. Right. (laughs) Facts. If you fact gravity is real, right, if you drop facts. something, it will fall to the ground. Yeah, Nicki Minaj is the best rapper alive. Opinion that's yeah, not right, fact. but that is an opinion. Even is, if a lot of people share the same opinion, that still does not make it fact. That's another thing because I feel like a lot yeah. of people they subscribe to that group thing too, and they're like, well, if a lot if enough people agree with me, then that makes it fact. No. That's not how this works. Let That's not you, how life works. I tap out the camera. As soon as people start talking about album sales, I tap out. Album sales is no longer relevant in today's culture. Nope. It hasn't been relevant since the early 2000s because we stream. If you mention mm-hmm. album sales and people charting, I'm tapping out because you already have lost the argument. <laughs> You've already lost because well, you don't understand. You better than me. <laughs> <laughs> you better than me because I don't even get that far. I'm like, do I like the song or not? Right. Out, anything outside of that. And when it comes down oh, to it, note. oh, you good? Oh no, I was gonna, I was gonna say something different. Go ahead. Oh no, I'm saying when it comes down to it, people forget that it's entertainment, and it's like, why is it that we have to defend our interests? Like, like you said, if you like it, you like it. Why do I have to constantly defend my interest to you? It's not gonna change. I like the goddamn song. Right? It's Who are you? <laughs> like, Who are you? Why that you... I have to right. debate about what I like? Either I like it or I don't. Right. And that's it. Like with movies. End of story. Right. With movies. <laughs> uh, why'd you like that movie? Because I resonated with it. I don't know. Like, what the fuck? Like, I, why is this even necessary? And then why are you so threatened? That why are we so threatened by people that have different preferences than us? Mm. like why does that make us crumble like oh my god (laughs) because if someone has a different preference then that takes us out of their view Mm. I mean not me but like what you like because that if it's not hurting me if it's not taking money from me keeping me from sleeping all of that kind of stuff do what you want to do and if it's not hurting you know like children and stuff and women but Overall, I think that's what it, like a lot of, and this applies in a lot of facets of life where it's just like, if you like things, it's kind of like a tunnel vision thing. And people assume another person has tunnel vision. Hmm. And that tunnel vision is kind of like shared interest. So if you have interests that fall outside of that scope, that means you're not seeing me. Hmm. That's the assumption. Yeah, Instead of being like, oh, look, I am a human being with a complex brain. I can like multiple things at once. People are like, no. You. Because right. while y'all talking about prefer- Cardi, all this other stuff is going on. Nigga, we all have the, the ability <laughs> to do multiple things. 
Yeah, like just be quiet. Like I hate when people be like, "Why is nobody talking about this?" And it's like just because people in your purview are not right. speaking on it, that doesn't mean it's not being discussed. Someone had to discuss it because otherwise, how do you know about it? Uh, so ten times out of ten, whatever you're going up about, you were not there personally to witness. Right. So someone had to have said something for you to know about it. And while we're talking about purview, listen. Niggas out there, listen, attention, all niggas, <laughs> all niggas and bitches. This is Trina. What's that song? Well, anyway, I'm I'm being ratchet. Um, oh, ratchet. you choose to follow people. Can we agree on that? All right. So I don't Ooh. understand why y'all get so mad when the people you follow post too much of what you don't want to see. I don't get. Why y'all bitch and moan and your status is, oh, I'm so tired of seeing this person on my timer. I'm so tired. Bitch, log off. Unfollow. Mute. Why do you feel like it's a weird status message to me? Like, it's a weird kind of, you control your community. Like, that's, like I don't, I don't, like, you can't control what people post. But you can control what you see. So I never understood the status messages like that. Like, oh, why people have long stories? Or why do people post selfies all the time? Or why do people post news? Why do people post their ass on hump Wednesday? Why do people talk about this person? Unfollow them. That's it. But you can't control what people post. And also, what's interesting, like, especially on days that Beyonce releases anything, you always see the people say, I'm tired of seeing Beyonce on my timeline. But they make it seem like all the Beyonce fans have had a group meeting and they all have decided to post at the same time of the day. No, you just follow a lot of Beyonce fans. And if every fan is posting once a day about her, they're not doing it to annoy you. They're just doing their one post for the day to show their love for her. So it's this weird thing of like, I'm tired of seeing this as if people are doing it just to annoy you. It's a weird, yeah, it's people weird. have this weird thing of centering themselves and it's just like, no one's thinking about you, beloved. Not at all. Literally no one. But my only thing with what you were saying, because I definitely agree. Two things. Uh, number one, the only time I would say I could halfway see it is if it's somebody you've been following for a long time and their like online presence, their style changes, that I could see because a lot of people don't want to be honest and be like, you know what, you're no longer for me, let me click unfollow. Just because it's like, okay, I've been following you for nine years and now all of a sudden you're on some hotel bullshit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the other thing is logging off is self-care. <laughs> yes. There is nothing wrong with not opening Twitter, especially if the whole, if your cur personally curated timeline is not discussing things that you care to see. There's what? How many apps in the app store? Like a billion? Whew. There's no reason for you to be sitting here complaining about what you see on Twitter. You don't have to be on here. Nope. Go do something else. Go read. I mean, I, let me not make suggestions because I don't know. Y'all might be dumb. <laughs> but <laughs> That's coloring there's books. Nothing, listen, those coloring apps on the devices are mm -hmm. the fuck clutch. Go and beat they your are dick. Therapeutic. Go beat your dick. There's plenty of porn out go, there. Go beat your right. Dick. Go shit. Go beat somebody else's dick. Go I don't beat know. Right, but to to be upset. Go be a hoe. Go be a hoe and stop worrying about other people being hoes. Because it's yeah, just like just... Instagram. Like I swear, it's like have you? Seen, I, I know you've seen the memes because the gay community is so small. So you've probably seen the same memes I see all damn day. What was it all like? <laughs> oh, y'all probably not gonna like this because I'm not naked. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you're just boring you're just boring that's all you're just boring yeah. it's not that you're not naked you're just boring and no one fucking well, cares <laughs> that's it not only that but again like I said the lack of uh, self-awareness because if you curated a following from being naked you can't be upset if your following does not give you the attention that you're seeking when you're not naked right like if like and I mean I'm not saying that it's right I'm just, I only deal in facts. Yeah. I only deal in what's real. And what's real is most times, however you garner that appreciation, that's what people come to expect from you. Right. Now, so this... if you start trying to do something different, 
there's nothing wrong with that, but you can't be up. Just like, okay, if you've been naked for three years on Instagram and you got yourself 50,000 followers and now you decide, I don't want to be naked no more. Okay. You're going to have to build that back up to non nakedness. I don't yeah. know if you sing or if you right. swing from a pole. I don't know if you Spider-Man do black. I don't know. Be Whatever it is that you do. <laughs> and it's funny you because build, you probably gonna have to build that from scratch. It just is what it is. Yeah. I'm actually, and it's funny, that's a good perspective you brought up, but I'm actually talking about the people who don't post anything new. They're shaming the people who are nude. These are people, oh. yeah, that, that, that's a good perspective too. If you change your mind and change your brand and you get mad about it, that's that's good too. But there's people yeah. who yeah. don't post any news, but they want to shame the people because they're getting attention because of it. Oh, like, no, oh, those yeah. people are just plain weird. I don't know. Well, it's just, <laughs> that's it's, just it's, weird it's, to me. It's envy at the end of the day. It's just kind of like, you. once again, you follow who you want to follow. I'm pretty sure you can create a timeline that doesn't have nudity on it, but there was something in you that wanted to follow these people. But at a certain point, point something ticked in you that you weren't getting the attention that you actually wanted and they were so now you got to be passive aggressively post shit about it in your damn story and it's just like girl no one cares it's not gonna stop that's what i'm saying people complain about shit that's not going to stop and that's what i don't why are you wasting your energy it's like complaining about weather. It's to be wasted, I guess. Like, I oh, know, it's so but... fucking cold. Yes, it is fucking cold. I hate the fucking rain. Yep, a lot of people do. It ain't gonna stop, though. Mm-hmm. So get mm-hmm. you an umbrella or stay your ass at Ella, home. Ella, Ella. Hey. <laughs> like, yeah, so it's just interesting. So that's definitely something that we can use less of as far as, like, themes and things like that. You got, okay. you got, you got another theme to add to this or something? I do. So back to... Back to black. Back to black. Shout out, hey. shout out to Amy Winehouse, mm-hmm. R.I.P. Sis. <laughs> um, but one thing that I don't get, or maybe it's not even that I don't get it, it's just that I don't like it, and that is getting on Beyonce's internet and calling soul food or the food of our ancestors slave food with like a negative connotation. <laughs> And it's like, why are you doing this? <laughs> and it's like, oh, y'all eat chitlins? Y'all, don't y'all know we free? Shut the fuck up. Because <laughs> if your Mima saw you saying that shit, she'd probably bust you upside your head. Who are you? And I'm, I'm listen, I, I could be in a minority, but I just don't understand. <laughs> to be honest, to me, it feels like just plain disrespect. Like, if you choose not to eat foods like that, okay, fine. Mm-hmm. But for you to be so disrespectful of our ancestors, like these are the foods that they ate to survive. You would not be here if they did not eat these foods. So for you to be on here, like, don't you know we free? Like, I don't, that is such a slap in the face. Yeah. Whenever I see that kind of stuff, I'm like, is it that serious? Like, you can't just keep scrolling or you can't just be like, hmm, you know, chitlins are not for me. Yeah. Ooh, you know, hog moths. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to keep it moving. Uh-huh. You got to be on that. Y'all eat the slave food. Don't y'all know we free? Y'all going to go pick cotton next? What uh, the fuck are you uh, even talking uh, about? Uh, uh, they just want attention. But honestly, I hate food wars in general. You know how many times I hate seeing that fucking True. flats versus drums? Shut the fuck up. Sugar grits and salt grits. Shut the fuck up. Ain't Jemima <laughs> versus Mrs. Butterworth. Shut the fuck up. Eat what you yeah. want to fucking eat. Why do y'all have to have team this and team that? At the end of the day, you're going to eat what you want to eat. People say, oh, I don't trust nobody who buy this type of bread. Bitch, what are y'all talking about? Like, literally. Listen, I saw everything is for attention because a lot of that stuff, I'm like, maybe I'll live life differently. But nine times out of ten, I don't know what y'all do in your house. I don't know what kind of food you buy. And I don't care. Like, unless I'm going to your house to eat. Then in which case, you know, there might need to be some investigation. But Man. outside of that, it's just like, I agree. I don't get I don't get the just food war, especially because chicken is chicken, bitch. Just eat it. Yeah, people literally, they literally have arguments all day. Or even what type of fucking dressing you use, blue cheese versus ranch and all this kind of shit. You'd be like, listen, people like what the hell they like. They probably do some weird shit. Everybody got some weird ass food they eat. That people look at them like, why they eat it? But at the end of the day, don't get yeah. somebody else's yum because you're not into it. Just move the yeah. fuck on. And it's just yeah. like, but yeah, Food Wars is interesting. It's like, let people rock. Yeah. Like, mind your business. Now, the only thing I will say, 
that I would disagree with this is when they do that obvious bullshit where they're like, you not from Houston if you didn't put cheese on your pop tart. Bitch, nobody grew up eating no fucking <laughs> cheese slices on their pop tarts. You sat up there, you went in your mama's kitchen, you wasted her craft singles and the motherfucking pop tart for clout on the internet and then you get dragged because that shit is not real. Literally not nobody real. did that shit. Or, or, okay, I hate when people do regional shit that ain't regional. Like they'll be like, oh, New that that you good shit in New York, you good mean this, this. It means that everywhere, sis. Literally, <laughs> that's not regional. That's no, not regional. it's not. Oh my god, that cracks me up. Like, like that need to stand apart from everyone else, and it's like, okay, but not to the point of delusion. <laughs> Come on, beloved. Let's 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 stay on the path of reality. Oh man, that is so everybody crazy. says you good, <laughs> right? Like it's like oh in New York, and I remember they had that meme, and everybody kept crossing out the state and putting their own in. I'm like, I can see the cross out, <laughs> right? <laughs> man, but you, you're right. It's a need to feel different. It's a need to have individuality. It's mm-hmm. a need to also elitism. It's kind of like, yeah. Oh God. I, yeah, I was talking to Christina about like travel groups because she's in a lot of travel. Hey, groups. Christina. And yeah, hey, Christina. She was in a lot of travel groups. She talks about how people are very cliquish because of certain places they but they're like, oh, Team Haiti <laughs> or Team. It's like, girl, why do we have this need to shut other people out? Like, even in a, in a travel group where we're all traveling and all doing our thing, you still gotta find a way to be like, well, I've been to Fiji and you ain't yeah. been. To, it's just. Child. And then on the other side of that is the people that are like, oh, well, it's too many black people going to to Greece. So, you know, right. it, it's not a good place to go no more. And it's like, we don't fucking, first of all, what does that really say about how you feel about black people? Right. That's the real and shit. And it'd be black people that's saying that. But number two, it's like us going somewhere, it doesn't sully it. It doesn't make it in. Listen. Do you do your Google Greece these these coins? Right, <laughs> they probably and have on, and on top of that, and on, right, and on top of that is nigga black people probably going to places where they can safely travel. <laughs> Why you, why, Hello. You can't go to Russia, bitch. <laughs> I mean, you can. You may not be seen again, man. But it's just, yeah, no, your ass gonna be a casualty of the born ultimatum. Also, around in Russia. <laughs> on the same token as that, though, what is <laughs> okay? Why do people? I know people. Why? What is it about bandwagoning that makes people so mad? Have you noticed that? Like. If something gets a lot of praise or something really big happens, there's people who get angry. Why everybody got to like the same shit? It's like, well, maybe it's just that good. Or like, it's okay. Like, why do people have this need to rip joy from people? Like, it's like one of those things like, okay, so like, I mean, I don't even, I don't want to talk about Bird Box. Fuck Bird Box. But like, let's say... <laughs> I'm trying to think something else that happened. It's just always happening. And it'll be something mm. that everybody's really, really into. And it's a mm. good it's a good thing, but then people get mad because everybody's into it. And it's like, why y'all can't think for yourselves? Well, maybe they are thinking for themselves and they just like it. Like, it's just it's just that good that everyone is liking it. Why does that make people so mad? It's like an interesting I don't think thing. It's, sorry, I don't think it's any different than what we said before about just the need to feel different. I think that that need will manifest itself in different ways. And sometimes it's if everybody else is happy, then I have to. But some people just have that contrarian spirit. Yes, that's it. And that it it, it just applies to anything. Just, oh, I, good example. I have an example. So with like viral mm-hmm. viral things, for example, the ten year challenge. Okay, you've seen the ten year challenge. You're like, oh, I want to do one too. And then people are like, oh, I don't want to do one now. But then it becomes this whole thing like, damn, everybody going to do this shit? I don't want to see this shit all day. And it's just like, once again, you control your well, timeline. That's, yeah, that's how the internet works. But then, but then also, <laughs> why do you want to rip enjoyment from other people? Like, just because you don't want to see. It's just a, it's a weird kind of thing. Let people rock. Like, yeah. like let people live. It's interesting. It's 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 mad interesting. Yeah, I think a lot of that is like I said, it's either just the need the need to feel different and the elitism and contrarian spirit shit, or all three, which cumulates into just a, a shit bag person. 
<laughs> yeah, oh, let me not say that. Someone that a lot of people probably don't want to be around, which is weird in itself. Like some people take a lot of joy or they take pride in being like, well, my circle is small because only certain type of people can handle me. What? Why is that to be celebrated? Right. It sounds like you're trying like you to be therapy. Yeah, like you don't get any special points because don't nobody want to be around your funky ass. <laughs> right. Get your shit together. <laughs> Man, no, that's real. It's real. Yeah, I just, yeah, no. It's, it's people, people are a lot. Too much, to be honest. Too much to be honest. Yeah, I yeah, I agree. I um, agree. Well, I, I've definitely enjoyed this conversation. I'm glad that it had some death. I'm glad that it turned into an actual <laughs> episode because I didn't know for a while. Like I told you, I'm very all over the place, and it'll it'll get normal again soon. But this was great. I feel like this was quality. Yeah. I'm here for it. Tell people where they can find you. Um, you can find me under the bridge. No. <laughs> <laughs> you. Can- <laughs> you can find me on the internet. I am Trillificent pretty much anywhere that you can think of. And if not, if it's somebody else, good luck. But yeah, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Trillificent. Um, you can find my show, Gay Side Stories. You can just search in Google and everything should pop up. And you can find my new podcast network. It's called Flawless Noises Media Network. And you can find that on the internet at Flawless Noises on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And just because we put out a problematic but funny episode today, you can also find me on my other podcast called Ratchet Ramblings. And same thing, search for it, it should pop up. But it's at Ratchet Ramblings on Twitter and Ratchet Ramblings with the S on Instagram and Facebook. And before you take back over, I just wanted to say thank you for having me on the show. It's always fun to collaborate. Our little, what, yearly collaboration, double collaboration that we do. Because like you said, you were just on my show like in November. Yes. So. Right. It's good to be back on the outline. It, it feels very prestigious. I feel like Dina Jones. <laughs> yes, Dina Jones. <laughs> One night only. <laughs> right. I'm so good. <laughs> yes, well, I'm, I'm happy to have you on as always. I love uh, all the support that you bring to the show. It's always nice to listen to shows and hear. It's it's so funny. Like, I'll be listening to you guys' shows weekly and just minding my business. And I'll hear Kevin Dwayne. I'm like, oh, what, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I just love yeah. that it's like funny I'm just listening and I'm like oh Kevin DeWayne said I said I'm at the point now where I say shit and people listen what oh no listen, that'd be me because I'm like ain't nobody listening to this show <laughs> and somebody's like well when you said I'm like ooh wait a minute I don't, are you sure that was me they, they, they be listening they be taking notes they take notes for sure <laughs> yeah Ooh-ha. they retain it that's the scary part to me <laughs> Like, did I say something that was worth you repeat? Okay, well, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Man, I love it though. But I am. I'm happy. not freaked out. I am happy with all that is going on with you. Uh, you seem very happy in Seattle. I love watching uh, your status messages. They seem like all you, all the, <laughs> all the things that you observe that's going on in Seattle crack me up. And I, I think it's a good fit for you. Like, I'm very, very happy that the transition worked for you. I appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to seeing or hearing and watching what unfolds with you. Like Ooh. I've been noticing your little your 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 climb. By what? And I'm like, look at this. I've been noticing your climb, you know, you're getting recognition and shine and uh. doing different things with the show. And I'm like, well, <laughs> look at my podcast brother, just doing his motherfucking thing. I'm so happy. I'm so proud. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm I'm trying, I'm trying, but you know, you know, life is interesting. You just keep doing and just be consistent, and keep it pushing, and that'll be Ooh, that. consistency. Man, that is, that is a word. It it, it is a word. Consistency is key. It, it 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 is sometimes, sometimes, yeah. But sometimes a bitch Ooh. need a break. <laughs> sometimes you just be like, you know what? Awesome. I just want to be a human today. I don't have any kind. <laughs> Um, but no, um, but all that info will be in the show notes so you guys can click it and find it easily. Um, but yeah, thank you for being on the show today. Um, all of you who are listening, make sure you are subscribed to both of our podcasts and make sure you share it with a friend. Yes, sharing uh, is caring. Word sharing, of mouth is it still. Re- it really is. 
It works. It's still that girl. It's, it's still, still that, that girl. girl. Leave your comments. Leave your review on Apple Podcasts, and you know, you know, help us get up the chain. And um, mm-hmm. and also, I know I don't plug it enough, but you can also email me the outline podcast at gmail dot com if you have any question comments. I don't care about your concerns, but questions comments oh. are good. <laughs> this is my shit. <laughs> don't have no. <laughs> He said, leave your Apple Care note. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we don't want that. But you know, if you want to ask a question, I, I have been asked to do like an advice segment. So I mean, if you have questions, that's fine. Cool. Send it there and we'll definitely I'll definitely, you know, if it's not too much, you know. If it's within if I have the range, like Trilipus has said, I will answer. If I don't have the range, I'm gonna tell you to, to go meditate or seek. Yeah. professional help but other than that you know we're all good <laughs> but um that'll be the show and i will talk to you all next week peace out peace.